you really know you're getting old when you recall interviewing people and now the subject is their son. <laughs> With me today is Mike Campbell, whose father, Carol Campbell, I interviewed when he was a freshman House member back in 1979. Wow. Of course, the late Governor Campbell went on to be a two-term governor of South Carolina and a player in every presidential primary in the history of this state. His son Mike is quite a player himself. Well. <laughs> he propelled Governor Mike Huckabee to a near win in 2008. And this year, well, he's got an interesting story. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, this is uh, this is turning out to be uh, the year that I have not seen before. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, historical moment, but particularly if uh, if Gingrich ends up pulling this thing off tomorrow in South Carolina, which it looks like he's poised to do, uh, for the first time in history, uh, someone will different will have won Iowa. Someone will have different will have won New Hampshire, and someone will different will have won South Carolina. That's never happened before. No, it uh, hasn't. And, uh, and so uh, that's a very unique uh, unique scenario. But I also think that South Carolina, once again, is is setting itself up to be the fire, uh, the firewall state, the bellwether state for uh, uh, for deciding the the outcome of the of the election. You took a bit of a risk earlier in the year when you came out for Governor John Huntsman. Right, right. And rather than look back, let's just Yes. Fill in some gaps. Sure, sure. Uh, did you talk to Governor Huckabee before you made your decision to go with Newt Gingrich? I, I did not. Uh, I actually, honestly, I did. I, I placed a call into the governor. I know he was traveling. Uh, you know, I had uh, um, real briefly. I had. Uh, on making my decision with John Huntsman, uh, I spoke with Governor Huckabee and actually have waited until uh, Huckabee made his decision. As you know, I served as his state chair here in 08 and had said I certainly would help him again this year if he ran. And so I waited, sat on the sidelines until he uh, made his decision. Once he made his decision, uh, I had already met John Huntsman at that point. He contacted me, asked me if I would get on board, uh, uh, asked, uh, called Mike Huckabee, asked him what he thought about it, and uh, he had nothing but you know glowing things to say about John Huntsman uh, they uh, are buddies as governors they had they jammed in rock bands together and uh, had a real good relationship uh, having said that so I was glad to get on board with uh, with Huntsman uh, fast forward to this past Monday Huntsman when he dropped out of the race uh, decided uh, you know I, I uh, started uh, uh, having uh, communications with several of the uh, the uh, other uh, campaigns they started reaching out to me uh, Speaker Gingrich was kind enough to call me uh, and on uh, and, and was very persistent in calling me on Monday and tr finally tracked me down and we had a wonderful conversation with each other uh, and uh, as a return in return I uh, spoke with a couple of uh, former congressmen who uh, served with both uh, the speaker and, and dad uh, and uh, they were they were kind enough to encourage me to do that and I just you know I took a look at it and looked at the the current field that we that we have, and I just felt like that Newt Gingrich uh, possesses the qualifications that we're going to need going forward, not only to to uh, beat Barack Obama, uh, but also to uh, you know if he if he's fortunate enough you know if he gets in there and he's the president of the United States, I think he has the experience and the knowledge that we're going to need in the state to I mean in the uh, in the country to kind of bring us back together uh, so we're not so as so divided and uh, and to try and get a good conservative agenda back in there. I just saw a poll that showed 20 percent of South Carolina primary voters are undecided. Yes, now, yes. Any thoughts about the great undecided? Well, you know, I think I think that plays well more so for like Gingrich uh, or I don't think that that plays well for say Romney. Uh, I don't know how what it what it does for Santorum. Uh, I don't know what it does for Ron Paul. But I think you know, one uh, Mitt Romney's still struggling with the issue that he's been struggling along all all along, and that is uh, being able to sell himself and get the uh, conservative base comfortable with him. Uh, and that if if there were uh, if they were comfortable with him, that you wouldn't have that many undecideds. And I think that. The fact that, that Gingrich is now surging here, um, I think this bodes well because I think people are starting to lean more that way. And I, as if you if you take a look at the numbers uh, just over the last say 72 hours, uh, and and from 
certainly since Monday's debate, uh, you know, with Gingrich's performance, the performances that, that he has has, that has really kind of tightened the focus on it. But I also think a lot of it is, uh, people are starting to tune in uh, you know uh, sure. uh, other, other than other than us political junkies uh, I think that you know most most voters you know you give them a, a week to ten days out from the campaign or from from having to go step into the uh, to the ballot box and that's when they really start paying attention I think that's what's going on right now your father used to be able to predict these primaries <laughs> pretty well in the yeah end. Do you want to predict in terms of percentages how it turns out I, you know I, I, I honestly no I don't because I have no I I have no clue as to what's going to happen. I mean, this is one that I really just, I can't quite put my finger on. Uh, I do think Gingrich is going to pull the thing off, I, how, how, whether, whether how tight it is going to be, I, but I really do think he's going to. I think uh, uh, there are four new polls that uh, just came out uh, yesterday. Each one of those show, are showing him you know, ahead, but as you say, there's still a large uh, factor of undecided, and that's why it's going to be hard to predict uh, uh, what's going to happen.